Archie, I have this life insurance policy I've been paying on for about 15 years. Am I going to need it after I retire? Well, Rob, that's going to depend. Let's dig a little deeper. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome back to the Last Paycheck podcast. We're your hosts, certified financial planners, Archie Hoxton and Rob Hoxton. And we've got another good topic for you today. This is one that kind of came up in episode three, to mortgage or not to mortgage. Uh, We were talking about it and, you know, the question sort of naturally arose, hey, do you need life insurance after you retire? Most people would agree that if you have a wife, a husband, children, any of that uh, dependents, you need life insurance, you know, uh, while you're working, right? Because they're depending on your income. But the question then becomes, what about when you retire, when you've saved and you've kind of hit that point? Maybe, you your, mor- maybe your mortgage is paid off. <laughs> right. So what do you think, Rob? Do you, do you need life insurance when you retire? Well, you know, the situation is always the boss. So um, anything about finance and financial planning, this is true. Uh, it really depends. Right. And so, um, you know, you can think of a lot of scenarios where you've accumulated enough money um, and assets to be able to support yourself in retirement. Um, you have educated your children. You've done any number of things that where you might have needed life insurance in case you died prematurely. So for many, many people in retirement, maybe <clears throat> maybe insurance, life insurance isn't that important. But there are some scenarios where where they, where it might be important, right? right? That's a great a great point. And before I guess before we dive in too deep into those reasons, uh, let's kind of discuss what life insurance is and what it's not. Yeah, because I mean, if you've ever had a family member go into the life insurance business, you've you've had the pitch, <laughs> right? right. So, or a close friend, so fraternity brother, or sister, or whatever. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So. To you know, we'll we'll keep this really high level. We'll do another episode on this later. But you know, we like to think of life insurance as insurance, right? It's uh, just like your car insurance, right? It's there to mitigate a specific kind of risk or several risks. So with any insurance, you're paying the insurance company to take on that risk for you. You're paying them small amounts over a long period of time to cover a risk that would be catastrophic if it came along. And with life insurance, that catastrophic risk is your death or the death of someone uh, near to you or that helps to support the family or that kind of thing. Uh, But it's really ensuring the risk of your death. Uh, What it's not, and maybe, Rob, you want to cover this part. I mean, this is, we, this this pitches all the time and involve Right. So, I mean, you've got really, if you, if you boil it down, there are really two types of insurance. There's, there's term insurance, mm-hmm. which is um, temporary. It's for a finite period of time for a particular risk. Uh, and then there's, there's what is often referred to as cash value insurance uh, or permanent insurance. And <clears throat> permanent insurance is one that has a cash value that's built. Um, in the policy. And essentially, the way I like, like to look at it is if you have an insurance need that's likely to still be present when you get to be quite old, what you need to do is have permanent insurance where you're paying a higher premium. The policy holds that premium. It invests it perhaps um, at some interest rate. Uh, you get some tax benefits for it, but what you're basically doing is you're paying for the future cost of insurance when you're younger. Um, and so I like to think of using term insurance when there's a finite period of time when the coverage is needed, but if there's a need for a much longer term policy, then maybe a permanent type cash value policy is needed. Uh, right. So, right. Yeah, and that's that's really important to note. And and a lot of a lot of folks will get a little bit, let's say, mixed up and and switch flip the investment feature of insurance and the insurance feature upside down, right? Where the investment feature is the most important, but but it's important to always keep the insurance piece in mind. So let's talk a little bit about why 
reasons why someone might actually need that in, in retirement. Yeah. Well, and maybe we can start by sort of, since we've talked about scenarios where you might need temporary insurance and scenarios where you might need permanent insurance, maybe we can break it down like that. So yeah. in retirement, some scenarios where you might need temporary insurance coverage. Uh, one that comes to mind is um, you still have a mortgage. We know when the mortgage will be paid off. That might be a situation where having some term insurance would be useful. Right. Yeah. If you have 10 years left, a 10-year term policy, you match it up, mortgage is gone. Because the reason for that, you know, if you, if it, let's say, you know, you pass away, maybe you're doing part-time work that's helping to pay the mortgage. Maybe, uh, you know, you, you have a loss of a pension when you pass away that's helping to pay the mortgage. Who, who you leave behind may be then burdened with that mortgage. So you have the insurance. If you pass away, you use the proceeds, pay off the mortgage. They're not burdened. Right. Right. So that risk is taken away. Uh, that's a really good reason to have one. Another, another good example of why you might want a term or temporary insurance is if you're um, in a business like our scenario, our situation. So, Archie and I are partners in Hoxton Planning and Management, and I'm substantially older, uh, and ultimately Archie will own the business, um, all of it, not just the part that he owns now. Um, Archie would prefer not to be in business with his mother and sister. Uh, so we have bought life insurance on my life. Archie pays the premium. And if I die prematurely, Archie will have tax free a tax free death benefit that he can use to then buy out his mom and sister and 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 own the business entirely. So he knows how to run this business. He doesn't really want people who don't know how to run a business like this as partners. Life insurance is an inexpensive way to eliminate that risk. And so we've chosen to do that. So that's a, right. an excellent example of how you can use temporary or term insurance. Another good one, another good uh, example where term insurance makes a lot of sense is maybe you're supporting a child or a grandchild, right? And you know <clears throat> you're retired. You know exactly when they're going to be independent. You've got a good idea 10 years out, 15 years out. and But you want to make sure that if they really if you were to pass away and they needed financial help, that there would be a lump sum of money that could put them through school, get them started off with, you know, whatever it is that it's important to you to support them with just general living needs, a place to live, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and you've got kind of a set time frame, right? Uh, and that's sort of a unique situation, but plenty of people find themselves there. And, and so that might be another reason to use term insurance and to have that in retirement. A twist on that, Archie, uh, would be if you have a child or a grandchild who has special needs, right? Now, that might be some a scenario where you want permanent insurance. Right. Could go either way. Talk to your advisor. Um, and it's really important to know that any death benefit that a disabled um, or special needs child or adult would receive needs to be received in a special needs trust. Right. Uh, so uh, that's beyond the scope of this this particular um, episode, but uh, it's really important that they not receive those funds directly um, uh, for a variety of financial reasons. And there are there are financial planners who specialize in special needs planning. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, seek one out and 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 work with them to establish the the right trusts, <clears throat> the right kinds of accounts and set up your beneficiaries for life insurance properly. Um, so that's really that's a really good point, Rob. Um, how about some scenarios where more permanent insurance makes a lot of sense? <clears throat> well, one big one that we see around here a lot, because we live in a very agricultural community, um, and, and, and so you find a lot of times farmers have really unique estate planning needs. And this can apply to anyone, you know, if you have a closely held business that's uh, fairly illiquid, um, that, that it's maybe a family business, this can apply, or it can apply for anyone who wants to, you know, plan to use life insurance 
to create liquidity in their estate. But going back to the farmers, oftentimes they'll find themselves where they're passing on a farm to their heirs who are taking over, and they've got a really, really valuable asset that's completely illiquid. And maybe they don't have as much liquid assets. So they might use permanent insurance to provide the liquidity to pay the estate tax on the actual land and farm equipment. Right. I mean, passing on. that's that's an, an excellent scenario example there, Archie. You know, if you if you have a large tract of land that's super valuable and the owners, mom and dad, um, uh, don't have a lot of liquid assets and that farm has to be fire sailed, they're going to have to sell more acres than they should than they would want to. And then they're going to be left with this decision, which of their children and grandchildren get to stay on the farm. Right. Right, a terrible position to put people in because I can promise you this, Uncle Sam expects his estate tax to be paid in full pretty quickly. Right. Uh, so using some insurance, uh, typically a second to die or survivor life permanent insurance policy, which doesn't pay until the second spouse passes, that's when the tax bill is due. Um, can really be uh, a lifesaver for that family and keep that family farm in the family for another generation. Right, right. And that's where you almost can, you can kind of wander into <clears throat> life insurance trusts and that sort of thing to, to keep your life insurance itself outside of the estate. Um, so that's another one. Uh, Rob, what about, the, this one's a little bit more, you have a lot of experience with this. What about life insurance permanent life insurance for long-term care needs. Yeah, so um, long-term care insurance is a, you know, in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of the insurance industry is a fairly new arrival. And, um, and it's designed to cover the costs that might arise from, you know, living longer and losing some of your activities of daily living, things like being able to dress yourself, feed yourself, bathe, go to the bathroom, those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, some years ago, insurance companies started offering long-term care insurance that would cover things like in-home care sometimes or in, um, in you know, retirement community type care, care for people who are suffering with dementia and Alzheimer's, which can be, can really wipe a family's finances out. Um, those policies tend to be quite expensive. And so what we've seen is a proliferation of sort of hybrid life insurance, long-term care policies, which make it easier to insure at least a portion of that risk, to lay that off on an insurance company, do it in such a way that if you don't use the benefit, which is what a lot of people think, what if I don't use the benefit? I lo lose all those premiums. Right. Well, if you do it with a hybrid policy, you might get, at least your heirs might get the premium back that you paid through the death benefit of the policy if, if you didn't use it for long-term care. So that's a, yeah. a great way to do it. Yeah. And, and I know because every so often you hear about another long-term care provider becoming insolvent and not being able to pay out their claims. Uh, because of this insurance, it's the, the risk is so expensive. The cost of long-term care is... is is kind of unbelievable. The cost to insure it is also, and a lot of these companies kind of mispriced out their, their early contracts. And so they often, you'll hear, oh, there's another one. It, it, it just went insolvent. Uh, the state stepped in to help out. But <clears throat> with this, you're dealing with life insurance and, and, and you're, you're managing the risk differently. Um, but it's, it's, you're working with you know, yeah. excellent companies that provide life insurance. And this, yeah. and this is really somewhere where you need a qualified, you know, insurance advisor right. um, to, to step in and, and assist. Um, one more scenario that really lends itself to permanent insurance, and this is something that I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in charitable giving and planning for that. Um, and I have a couple of charities that I've supported. My church is one. Um, there's another called Children of Uganda, which is, supports education in, uh, for children in, in the country of Uganda and East Africa. If you have supported a charity for a long time, that charity has come to depend on that support. You can use 
a life insurance policy. Maybe it's one you already own. Uh, it probably should be a permanent policy, so it, it's around when you actually pass away at 100 years. Um, uh, but you can use that to sort of endow that charity so that even once you're gone, that that charity continues to be able to complete its mission because of the funds that you've given. Right. So that's another great use for permanent insurance. So there are a lot of different ways that you can use insurance. You just want to make sure that you have the right kind and the one that makes the most sense financially for you. Right. And, and it's important. You want to own it for the right reasons too, right? Um, and and, and oh, another episode, just spoiler alert that's coming is, you know, kind of wrong reasons to own it. Social media, life insurance salesman, how to navigate that. Um, and, and so um, we'll we'll touch on that in another, another episode. But that's all for today. Um, so, hey, thanks for tuning in as always. If you have any questions, uh, leave us a comment. We'll reach out to you. Like we always say, we might even make an episode out of it. Uh, if you've got the question, others do as well. Um, like, subscribe, share it with your friends and family, and uh, we'll see you next time. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.